Hey guys, my name is Joanna, also known as Just Another Flutist here on YouTube, and I have partnered up with the Flute Center of New York to bring you guys monthly flute review videos. This month we are talking about Rizona by Burkhart Piccolos, but before we jump into that review, I need to let you guys know about a couple of perks if you use my code JAF to order flutes from the Flute Center of New York. Number one, you will get free domestic shipping within the US. However, when you take flutes out on trial, you will be charged the shipping at first, but it will be refunded back to you when you actually buy the flute. Number two, you get an extended 10 day trial. Usually it's only seven days. Number three, you get an extended 18 month warranty on your new flute. And number four, you can take up to three instruments out on trial at a time. Just to be transparent, I do earn a small commission on each flute that is ordered through the Flute Center of New York using my code JAF. If you wanna take flutes out on trial, all you have to do is contact the Flute Center of New York directly. I will put a link to their contact page in the info bar down below. You can email or phone them. Just be sure to give them the code JAF when you contact them. Please note that the trial program program offered by the Flute Center of New York is really only offered to those who are actually in the market to buy a flute. So please only contact the Flute Center of New York for trials if you are actually in the market to buy. Now if you already know which flute you want to order and you want to order it straight off of their website, you can do so. Just be sure to use my code JAF at checkout as your coupon code. The Flute Center of New York does price match any other authorized dealer, so you'll always know you're getting the best bang for your buck. Just a few notes concerning trying flutes. Please take off all rings and dangly jewelry that can potentially scratch flute. You will notice in the trial portions of this video that I actually forgot to take off my rings. So do as I say, do not do as I do. Thankfully this is a wooden piccolo so there was really nothing much for me to scratch. Never use the polishing cloth, the swabbing cloth, or the cleaning rod that comes with each new flute because they are not yours yet. And lastly a quick disclaimer, every flutist plays each flute differently. Like in Harry Potter, just as the wand chooses the wizard, so the flute chooses the flutist. My job here is just to describe to you to the best of my ability how these flutes and piccolos like to be played. It's up to you to decide which instrument works the best for you. Today we are looking at a beautiful, very popular piccolo by Rizona by Burkhardt. We'll be comparing their traditional head joint with their wave head joint. You may have noticed that I said that it's Rizona by Burkhardt. So just like how Azumi is a sub-brand of Altus and Sonari is a sub-brand of Powell, Rizona is basically a sub-brand of Burkhardt. So it's essentially a professional Burkhardt instrument for a more affordable price. I'll link the about page for Rizona in the info box down below so you can read more about it. But essentially, as you can probably tell from the way that I've described it so far, Rizona is geared towards advancing students or teachers of advancing students. Rizona's main goal is to put out really good instruments at the most affordable price that they can make it. So that of course is a huge plus for those of us who are on a budget, which is most of the music world is on a budget. Now a few fun facts about Rizona. If you look on their about page, you'll notice that they say that they started to come out with these piccolos in about 2007. That was the year I got into university. That was my first year in music school. I distinctly remember hearing about these new new piccolos by Burkhardt. And I remember that UBC actually ended up buying, I think, two Burkhardt piccolos. At that point, they were called Global Piccolos. They've been rebranded now as this Rizona by Burkhardt piccolos. Paul was the one who checked one out and we took into a practice room and played around with it and had a lot of fun. We couldn't believe that one, that the school had actually bought two of these piccolos because they're really, really good. That's kind of how I found out that it was actually affordable, especially for the way that it played. Everyone was always fighting over those global piccolos. So it was almost never just kind of sitting in a storage room. Someone was always playing it. Fun fact number two is that no flute or piccolo leaves Burkhart without Lillian Burkhart herself having played it first. So these piccolos that I'm about to show you Lillian Burkhart played it herself. Her lips touched this instrument. She's really a hands-on flute maker and flute company owner. Fun fact number three is that Lillian is one of the only women to actually own her own flute company. Go ladies! And finally, fun fact number four is actually something that I was not made aware of until after I got out of my bachelor's. All flute companies are actually connected. Lillian Burkhart and Jim Phelan, the founders of Burkhart Flutes, actually used to work for Powell Flutes before they went on to found Burkhart Flutes. And now that you guys know this, it's actually pretty cool to kind of compare and contrast piccolos from two different companies that were connected before and see how they differed over time and how some things remained similar. All right, now let's jump right into the packaging of this piccolo. So we've got a typical piccolo case and cover, basically a super tiny French model case. We got 
that furry white lining inside and a zipper pocket on the outside. Now what's interesting is that on the inside of the zipper pocket is not what I would think would be a normal sized piccolo cleaning rod. It is actually an extendable cleaning rod. So you can actually take the two pieces out and screw them together, which makes a super long piccolo cleaning rod, which of course means that it's a lot easier to clean out your piccolo. I love the fact that they included this. Under the case, you will find a certificate of authenticity signed by Lillian Burkhart herself. Now what I find is really interesting is what's on the back of this certificate of authenticity. It is a list of care instructions for your piccolo. Caring for your piccolo is actually quite different from caring for your metal flute because these piccolos are made from wood. Wood does react to temperature and humidity. So for example, she says, do not leave the piccolo on or near heaters during winter. Avoid prolonged exposure to the elements. This is especially true if you live in a cold, dry climate. Now, if you let your piccolo be exposed to those kinds of elements, your piccolo can crack. That is just the nature of how wood works. She also has detailed instructions here on how to swab out the instrument. Please read this very carefully and follow her instructions because I was one of those people who did not know how to properly swab out a piccolo and I got my cleaning rod and cleaning cloth stuck in it, which meant that I had to take it to a repair shop for them to extract it out. Don't do that read these instructions. To swab the body, feed a long thin strip of absorbent cloth through the slot of the swab about two inches. Insert the swab in the top, the cork end of the body, and push all the way out the bottom. Do not push in and pull back out of the top. The swab stick may get lodged at the small end of the instrument. The head joint can be swabbed separately by pushing a little of the cloth in ahead of the stick to remove water near the cork assembly. The biggest warning here is that the piccolo is not a cylindrical instrument. It is a conical instrument, which means that the end of the piccolo, the foot joint end of the piccolo, is actually smaller than the head joint end of the piccolo. And that is why a lot of people end up getting their cleaning rods stuck. Do not make the same mistake as me. Follow her instructions. All right, now let's get to talking about the piccolos themselves. First, I wanted to compare the traditional head joint with the wave head joint. You will see here that the traditional head joint looks, well, pretty traditional. It's your traditional oval that's been cut into the head joint. Now, as you can see, the wave has a ridge that's been carved into the flute. So this actually helps direct the air into the piccolo a lot more precisely. And spoiler alert, the wave can take a lot more air than the traditional can. Oh, and before I forget, let me list out the specs of this piccolo. Grenadilla wood hand cut head joint with solid silver fitting. Grenadilla wood body with silver plated mechanism. Solid silver tenon and end ring. Y style arms, white gold springs, split E mechanism, Rizona pads, Burkhardt scale, and A equals 442. All right, now let's start noodling on the traditional head joint. I noticed that this piccolo likes to be played with what I would describe as a small bullet of air that is hovering inside of your mouth. Now, the lower that you play, the lower in your mouth and more forward that bullet is. The higher you play, the more that bullet moves backwards and upwards. So I feel like it's this bullet of air that is moving on this diagonal line inside of your mouth. I also noticed that the lower you play, the more you'll feel rushing air on the bottom underneath that super concentrated bullet of air. Now, when you get higher, it changes. Your bullet of air is now up here, but the rushing air sensation is now against the roof of your mouth. So you'll feel that there's a break around F6, G6, somewhere around there. And you'll feel that you'll have to switch that rushing air feeling from down here in your mouth to up here. I am able to squeeze out C8, but you really feel like not only that bullet of air is like super high in your mouth, you really feel that rushing air barreling across the roof of your mouth. I do notice that the traditional head joint requires quite a lot of embouchure control and lip strength. And this is actually traditional piccolo playing. It is a lot of pressure against your lips. So if you naturally play in this like super concentrated style where you just naturally control everything with your mouth, then this piccolo will work very well for you. And now for harmonics.
I can squeeze out the fourth harmonic on this piccolo. And in fact, it was when I was messing around with harmonics was how I really discovered how this piccolo likes to be played. Harmonics tend to be the most revealing out of everything when you are trying an instrument. So I noticed that the only way to get these harmonics out without cracking them was to play in this sort of like bullet form. And now for tone color. Essentially, you want to imagine that you're keeping everything very forward in your mouth if you want a thinner sound. So even when you are playing higher notes, you kind of want to feel like you're just kind of scooping everything forward, just like that. However, if you want a rounder sound, all you have to do is round out the bottom of that bullet of air and you kind of fill it with more rushing air. So essentially you're just giving that bullet of air a little bit more depth underneath it. I noticed that the roof of your mouth also has to be quite lifted. So you almost feel like your whole mouth is like it's like an oval. Basically, you just have to give a lot of space above and below the bullet of air. And now for the mechanism. I do notice that the mechanism airs on the side of resistant. In fact, this is one of the most resistant mechanisms that I have played on a piccolo, but that's not a bad thing because it allows for a ton of control. So this is very good for advancing students who may need just a little bit of help to play super evenly. This piccolo will basically even it out for you. Now, when it comes to the trill keys, this is flat out the most resistant trill keys I have ever played. But that means that I'm able to do a really, really even super fast trill. It's not flopping around unevenly, it's forcing it to be even. And now for articulation. I noticed that on this head joint, I am tonguing with the tip of my tongue on the bottom of my top front teeth. So this is my teeth, this is my tongue, and I'm tonguing like this. It's a very forward kind of tonguing, and I believe it has something to do with the fact that you need a lot of space above your bullet of air and below it, so pretty much the only place for you to tongue clearly and not too heavily is right there. That means, of course, that double tonguing is gonna be super forward as well. This is my ta and my ka is like, I feel like it's right here. Ta, ka, ta, ka. It's not all the way back like this. And now for dynamics. Now, because this is a piccolo, I figured that it would be more interesting for you guys if I focus on how far back I can pull. We all know how loud piccolos can play. All piccolos can play extremely loud. It doesn't matter how many people are playing in an orchestra at the same time, everyone will hear the piccolo. It's a given. Let's see how far back I can pull. Getting a super tiny sound on this piccolo is surprisingly quite easily achievable all the way up until F7. But as you can see from when I was playing around with it, I could actually squeeze out the F sharp, G, and even G sharp with quite a bit of effort, but it's still relatively soft for piccolo. So the way that you achieve this is by making that bullet of air super tiny, even tinier than before. You make your embouchure even tinier. You make everything even tinier. So the airstream that's coming out is also super tiny, but still traveling quite fast. And the only way to do this is by supporting like crazy. For those of you guys who don't know what support is, it's when you pull in your belly button, you know, like in Pilates or in like yoga and stuff like that. And they tell you to like flex your core. That's basically what you're doing. You're pulling in your belly button so that you flex your core muscles and that will actually support your airflow coming out of you. It'll be a lot more steady and it'll have a lot more depth. It will just sound a lot more supported. The sound won't just kind of drop dead. All right, and now let's noodle around with the wave head joint. <laughs> Playing 
on the wave head joint is actually more reminiscent of playing on the flute because you don't actually have to make your airstream super tiny. It is tinier than on the flute, but it's not as tiny as on the traditional head joint. However, the general way that you blow into the flute is actually quite similar to the traditional cut. Everything is just bigger. So that bullet of air is bigger. The space around that bullet of air is bigger. So you can actually fill out your mouth quite a bit more than on the traditional cut. In fact, you can fill out the sound so much on the wave head joint that you almost feel like the sound is quite bottom heavy. There's a lot of depth to the sound that you normally would never expect from a piccolo. And again, you're still playing with that bullet of air moving on that diagonal line in your mouth. You will also feel that rushing sensation of air. It's just way more of it. You can put a lot more air through this piccolo. So essentially the wave head joint feels like a bigger turbo version of the traditional head joint. And now for harmonics. Again, same idea, you just wanna use that kind of like bullet of air moving on that diagonal line and you'll get your harmonics out no problem. And in fact, because you can pump more air into this piccolo without losing your sound or without cracking your sound, I do find that it's easier to get the fourth harmonic out. And now for tone color. Now the thing I find really interesting about this is that usually I'm playing with the space below and behind the stream of air in your mouth when it comes to tone color. But on the wave head joint, I find that I actually started to play with the front of my mouth to get the different tone colors going. So the narrower I made the front of my mouth, the thinner the sound got. And for a rounder tone, I found that I had to widen out and scoop out that portion underneath the bullet of air even more. Because you're scooping it out so much out in the front for a rounder tone, when you use vibrato, you'll feel the vibrato kind of pulsating in the front of your mouth a lot. That's how you know you're getting it going. Now we all know that we are playing with the same body, so technically I don't have to go through the mechanism portion of my review, but I thought you guys would be interested to know how technical things sound with this particular head joint. So here I am playing my scales and doing some trills. And now for articulation. When I first tried to tongue on the wave head joint in the same way that I tongued on the traditional head joint, I found that my tonguing was a little bit too harsh. So I ended up moving it back, which means that I'm actually tonguing against the roof of my mouth right behind my top front teeth. I'm guessing this is because you are playing so much with the front of your mouth for like tone color and stuff like that. So it makes sense to move your tongue back a little bit so you have the room to play. Double tonguing uses the same idea as double tonguing on the traditional head joint, but everything is just moved backwards. I will give you a warning to not go too far back though. You don't want a true cuff from like the back of your throat. You still want it to be done mostly against the roof of your mouth, quite up high and a little bit more forward than a normal K sound. And now for dynamics. Again, let's see how far back I can pull. On the wave head joint, it is also incredibly easy to get a super soft sound all the way up to the F7. However, it is possible to do it on the F sharp, G, G sharp. I think I even did it on the A on this one, but those ones obviously take a little bit more effort. I will give a little disclaimer though. While these piccolos do make it easier to play super soft, you still need to train yourself to be able to do it. So you still need to be able to train your lips to withstand that kind of pressure. And again, same idea as on the traditional head joint, you gotta up the support like crazy when you play super soft. I actually felt that the softer I got, 
the more I felt like I was back on the traditional head joint. So that of course means that if you are naturally more inclined to a traditional head joint cut, you may feel that the wave requires you to put too much into the piccolo. At the same time, if you are more inclined to the wave head joint, this means that when you play the traditional head joint, you'll feel like you're muffled. You'll feel like you can't put enough into the piccolo. So basically you're looking at different sizes of Airstream. And I love the fact that Burkhart has given us these two options for us to choose from. You probably can already tell from the trials on this video, but I personally am more inclined to the wave style head joint. That's not too surprising because I love pumping a lot of air through my instruments. I am aware that not everyone plays exactly like me, so it really is up to you to try these piccolos and decide for yourself which way works for you. All right, and that is my review of the Rizona by Burkhart piccolo with the traditional and wave head joints. As of August 2017, the Rizona by Burkhart piccolo costs $2,560. The traditional style head joint is included in this price. However, if you want the wave style head joint instead, that will be an additional $100. And there we have it. I had so much fun playing with this piccolo. It was such a treat because everyone was always fighting over it when I was in school and now I get to play with them on my own and make a review. Like ugh, my mind is completely blown that my life has taken me here. Huge thanks to the Flute Center of New York for sending me this beautiful piccolo to play around with. If you guys have requests for future reviews, please put them down in the comment section below. Not only do I read them, but the Flute Center of New York reads them as well. Be sure to follow the Flute Center of New York on their Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. I will put all of their social media in the info box below. And as usual, if you like this video, make sure you give me a big thumbs up and hit subscribe for new videos every Saturday. My last video is over there. And if you want to catch me during the week, my social media networks are down there. But otherwise, I'll see you guys next week. Bye. All you have to do is contact the Flute Center of blah, 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 blah. Contact the Flute Center of New York, blah, 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 blah directly. Does not start with a B. Come on.